right, so let's try this again. Hopefully you guys can hear me now. And so now I gotta wait for people to jump in and somebody to tell me you can actually hear me. Can anybody hear me? Is anybody there? All right, so this is excellent condition on the stream. This is nuts. Usually don't have this, uh, this many issues. So forgive me for this, my apologies. Now I'm not seeing anything in the chat window. Okay, there we go. Now we're good? Oh, finally, okay. All right, all right, good. Sorry about that, you guys. I, I don't know what happened. I'll tell you what, you know how I fixed it? I restarted the computer, so I didn't change any connections, nothing. I mean, I checked all my connections first. Um, so it's not one of those picnic situations, you know, problem in chair, not in computer. Uh, it wasn't that. It was the computer this time. So just restarted it, and here we are. So I, uh, I'm working on this one of MODOK, and I, I started to say before I realized nobody could hear me, or I guess you guys didn't hear me, so you wouldn't hear me say it. Um, I, I was saying previously when no one could hear me that this is the first time I've ever drawn this character and I feel kind of silly about it because this is like a lot of fun. Uh, I, I used to caricature for years at parties and so that's this is what this guy reminds me of. Just like a, you know, big exaggerated caricature. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm fun with this one. And I've got another one to show you as well so you guys can pick, uh, you know, what you want to see if, if uh, I'm working on one of uh, Spidey and Doc Ock right here, and I've actually been struggling through the background, uh, so, and I could talk a little bit about that if you guys want to, you know, work on this one or whatever. So if you got questions on either one, just let me know, and we'll go back and forth. Um, so yeah, what is uh, what is up? Oh, I'm, I wanted to start this uh, with saying, yeah, hi Icon, hi La Monkey, um, hi Cool It Mr. Heat. <laughs> guys in your names, man. You guys got some pretty pretty funny names there. Uh, Noah's Art, how you doing? Uh, Vermilion Windsor? Windsor? Good to have you. Spidey, yep. Good to have you. Tre uh, Tre Trebian Hughes. Cool name. Gaz and Ross H. Fam. Good to have all of you here. Really appreciate the support and uh, you showing back up. And um, yeah, so... Uh, so Clip Studio, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about this because they're 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 coming out with some new updates, and I, I realized I wasn't updated uh, for quite some time on my app version, and uh, and even the desktop version, and I noticed once I updated that it's actually uh, running really smooth. Like the brushes even feel better. I notice, and then also, so it was just you know because I was so outdated. Um, who knows how many updates they did to the actual brush engine or something. So there was that, but then also they got some new updates coming out, new liquify feature. Uh, pretty excited about that because I always have to jump into something like Photoshop or Procreate to use the liquify. Um, actually like Procreate's better because Photoshop, the interface gets in the way, which kind of drives me nuts. Um, what else? They, they've got some enhanced 3D uh, features, which I'm pretty excited about because I've been doing uh, more 3D. I've been using Blender. Um, and uh, yeah, I would like something that's a bit more simplistic to utilize and then, um, you know, quick, effectively quicker to uh, lay out some quick buildings or whatever, maybe a, a room, and then I just need the basic perspective and structure of it, and then I can draw over top and do whatever. But, um, and I don't always need that, but uh, I did feel that I. I just needed it with that Spider-Man piece that I just showed. Like it's, uh, it's weird. Like sometimes I'm in the zone for drawing buildings, and other times I'm not. And then I have to, I feel like I have to relearn it. It's so silly, but yeah. 
Yeah, CSP is, you know, so somebody just said CSP is really evolving. And I got to get it to where your guys' comments are on my OBS screen. Then I don't have to sit here and read out the comments. Kind of silly, right? Um, I feel like I need to do that for anybody that's viewing afterwards. But I guess the comments show up in the uh, in the stream afterwards anyway. So maybe I don't have to do that. But I think it would be nice to put your guys' comments up on the stream. I've got to figure out how people do that. There's some kind of... Uh, additional code or something that you plug into OBS or something, right? Yeah, thanks, Noah. I appreciate that. Appreciate you support, supporting the Skillshare stuff. That's, uh, it, it helps me keep doing this. You know, crazy thing is, too, at Skillshare, like, they asked me to join them uh, years prior, and or about a year prior, and I just was like, no, no, you know, I'm I'm good. I'm just doing this Udemy thing and Gumroad thing and all this and that. And then I joined them. And, uh, yeah, they ended up becoming one of my best uh, sources of income. So it's just funny how that works out. You know, it's like never never turn down an offer. I shouldn't say never turn down an offer. You're going to get bad offers in life and work and stuff like that. So you never really know. I'm a bit of a skeptic. But I, I almost turned that down. And, it, yeah, now it's... It's like a really big deal for me. Like it helps me do all this stuff because it's it's a big breadwinner. Uh, but had I never took the opportunity and just you know passed it along, I would have really been missing out. Who knows how many times I've done that? So it's weird with this character's hair. I want to give him like some waviness, but then I also notice he's like this big pile of goo he wouldn't have like really nice hair right so i'm trying to like how far do i take it did i give him nice hair would that be silly like i started giving him muscles and i had to i looked at some of the other pictures i'm like yeah this guy doesn't really have muscles he's like stuck in this robotic chair you know robot um or he's he is a robot he is part robot part brain and uh yeah he probably wouldn't have big old muscles would he but i, I tend to put muscles on everybody so See, I even did it with the legs, but I'm going to go back and change that because, yeah, he's not using his legs a whole lot. Probably wouldn't have this big old rectus femoris popping out on the top, right? All right, just reading through some of your guys' comments here. How much does what cost? You're talking about CSP, Clip Studio? Yeah, so so they got their monthly uh, app version. If you guys are talking about the app, I jumped in the conversation here a little late. Um, but then this is the desktop version. I bought this years ago for like 150 maybe 200 I can't even remember the amount. All I could tell you is that since it was a one-time license, uh, when I bought this, it's so worth it. I mean, so so worth it. It's a, it's a fantastic um, software for that amount. Uh, now I know a lot of people get ticked when they see that the app version is a monthly subscription model, and you know they're all doing that, right? It's like everybody in this uh, world of digital anything is is like wanting to do the subscription model. Some people like that because they always get updates and they always get, uh, I guess, really just that. They get the updates for free and they know they already got the newest thing on on point and they're, I don't know, it's, I, I totally get it. Like if you come from the world where you bought something that's yours to now you have to pay monthly for it, it kind of throws you for a loop. So I, I totally get that because uh, that's me, you know, it's like. There was no Netflix back in the day or anything like that, but now everything is like a a Netflix kind of mimicking. You know, they all they all want that that monthly chatter. I, I guess the main thing is you gotta you gotta really be using it, right? If you're using it, then no biggie. But if you're not, then you need to get it off your subscription list or get off their subscription list. Yeah, what do you guys use mainly? Everybody that's watching right now, are you guys 
Uh, like, all right, I'll do, I'll do the first thing. Is it Procreate or Clip Studio Paint? Let's do a show of hands on that, if you don't mind. Procreate, both, Windows Paint, haha, -ha. funny. I said Clip Studio or Procreate. <laughs> you guys are throwing everything else in there. All right, fine. All right, couple for Procreate, couple for CSP. I know, there's so many different variable or variations, and they're all great. I mean, they all do the job. It doesn't matter what you use. Uh, it just matters how you use it. But the um, I just ask because... There seems to be a lot of people that, you know, say one is better than the other. And I see that a lot when I post different pieces of art. Why don't you do that in this software? I use this one. and, um, But yeah, I'd say the most powerful, especially with the new features they got coming out, just in general, is uh, is this one. Because, uh, and don't get me wrong, I'm a big Procreate fan. I mean, I do most of my work there uh, generally. Um, I'll tell you, a, a lot of times the limitations aren't really with Procreate for me. It's I'm kind of getting frustrated with the iPad. I, I love using the iPad, but it's small. I wish it was bigger. And you know, here I'm working on a Cintiq. I got a lot more visible space. And even if I work on my Intuos, I can project that to a bigger screen, uh, which you know is. It's kind of nice at times. Like there's times I really want to zoom into the work. Put it this way: like when I finish a piece, I end up having to take it into um, um, something like Clip Studio or whatever, or Photoshop, and check the work on the larger screens, anyways. And I always find flaws when I do that. Every time, it's not like, oh, I'm done with this piece and it looks great on my iPad. Something about as, as beautiful as that iPad screen is, it being smaller. I always seem to miss stuff, and so that's that's another one of the big uh, big reasons that I end up gravitating back to this. Um, <laughs> I'm reading some of the thoughts on the Inktober controversy. I didn't know there was an Inktober controversy. I guess I'm out of the loop there. Yeah, and I love I love Procreate for its user friendliness as well icon. The main thing is that, like I said, the constrictions of the iPad. Like, if they made a bigger iPad, I would run out and buy that sucker right now. And then also, I wish Procreate would have a desktop version. That's another reason why uh, Clip Studio is so effective is because I can seamlessly transition from, um, you know, one to the other. I, mean, I, I don't know why Procreate wouldn't wouldn't do that. It's, it's, all, it's app or nothing kind of thing, which... It's, it's a great app. I mean, you know, I've, I'm always talking about, always releasing videos on it because I'm literally a huge fan of it. You know, not paid to say that and nothing. I just really like uh, the app. It's, uh, it's, it's great. And you get it for like 10 bucks and you're done. I mean, that's insanely different than having to be on a, a subscription model. Okay, I'm a little weird with the hair here, but I'll keep working on it. I like to pinball back and forth here. And let me know if you guys have any specific questions that you want me to address. And then also the, um, you know, I've got, like I said, I've got this other one. We could work on some of the background there, whatever. Um, plan on getting both these done probably in the next week or so. So if, if that, let's see, I've got some stuff I need to clean up here.
Yeah, what's what, what's up with that Inktober controversy you're mentioning? Are you not seeing anything more on that? Because I don't really get what you meant there. Yeah, thanks, uh, Crazy Popcorn. I appreciate that. Taroya, uh, how to draw obliques and hips. I could, yeah, I could give you a quick little demo on that. And then while I'm doing that, I'll, uh, Crazy Popcorn said, what inspired you to draw and what age? I started drawing heavily. I always drew ever since I could remember, but I started drawing comics heavily. Comic style art at about 15. And I took a bit of a break for... I don't know, 15, 10, 15 years. And, and not really that I stopped drawing. I just uh, I ran a business and I didn't pursue comics anymore. And then I, I came back once the YouTube channel started taking off. And I thought, well, maybe I can still make a go of it, even though I'm a little bit older. Who cares? I'm just going to go for it anyways. And um, so then I've been drawn uh, relentlessly since then. And that was about eight years ago, 10 years ago. Yeah, so YouTube kind of re-inspired me to, to pursue comics. And not in the way where, you know, I'm drawn for the big guys or nothing like that. But I still get to sit around and draw comics and teach it. And, yeah, it's been, I've been pretty fortunate in that regard. Um, and then, okay, so hips and obliques. Let's, let's jump onto a new canvas here real quick. And I'll be happy to do that. Oh, okay. And uh, so, so hips, uh, what I first would say is draw like, um, well, I, I like to draw the perspective in which the hips reside, because if I don't, I always seem to get it a little bit wonky. I also like to draw the, the orientation of the upper body and relationship, and there's always a bit of a tilt there. Uh, so even if it's something like this, it's, it's a good idea to think a little bit more deliberately about this area first, I would say, uh, so that you, you know, because if you just start drawing it, typically I think what we do is we might draw, you know, maybe we're thinking of the hips like this. This is really bad because this isn't really how I do it. Um, so something like this, we go, okay, there's a belly button. Obliques would be up here somewhere, I guess. Hip bones up here somewhere. I'm kind of trying to over-illustrate it. Maybe a leg's coming forward, leg's going back. Something like that. And so, it's not that I can't get in there, but I have to get this bend going. You know, the this part right here always tilts back. And that's what I'm trying to envision. So for me, if I start with the uh, the structure that I just laid in, Get this out of the way here. And then I tone this back or whatever. Then it's easier for me to go, okay, the hips are kind of on the front, right? If we look at the, what is it, pelvic cradle, cradle, cradle. <laughs> and uh, you got the aces up here somewhere. And then, uh, I can't remember the dip that it does there, but it, we'll just start with the abdomen, for instance. So if you bring the abs in like this, kind of flow through here and then maybe from this angle you see in a very defined uh, low fat person you're going to see the, the hip there more and so then the obliques they kind of come in like this they flow to the side and then you'll get like this love handle right about here kind of sits against Kind of builds up right there. And then you got to think about the connection points of the legs. And they're on a bit of an angle. Let's see, the belly button is right through the middle here, right? Somewhere in here. Ribs up here somewhere. And then bring a leg forward, leg back. Usually like a little dip right here. Depending on the angle, you sometimes see the glute more or less. Depends on the 
person and how big their glutes are, obviously. And then the leg muscles go up to this asis. Kind of dips in right here. But then they all kind of point up into this asis area. Anterior superior iliac spine, I think is what the... Is that an abbreviation or acronym? God, I always get those confused. Okay, but anyways, you know, the quadriceps and the rectus femoris, they all kind of point up there. That's that's probably a bit confusing. Let me get that out of there. I just want you to be aware of that because it does help to draw in leg muscles a little bit better. So basically what you do is, or what I do, I guess, is I, I tend to think about this shape right here for the leg so that I don't draw the legs too... Um, cylindrical I guess there's a bit of this high and low point to the leg muscles but the obliques and the the you know that's over here and let's see I think is it it's even up here isn't it I'm in a bit of a hard time remembering right now for some reason oh let's bring these both down Yeah, because the abdominal muscle, well, no, the abdominal muscles do go all the way to the top here. The top one, the top two are shaped a little differently. And these are way out of proportion, by the way, but you get another two, another two, and, you know, some people have a visible eight-pack, some don't, right? So it's something like that. And then the obliques go like this. You got the serratus, the interlocks, something like this. Does this like kind of, I always compare it to like taking your fingers and locking them together. You get that kind of zigzagging. Okay, that's pretty messy. Let me clean it up real quick, see if you got any questions. But that's, that's pretty much how I tend to think of that area. I don't know if that's the right angle that you want to see. I'm just trying to read through these comments. Oh, okay, you guys are talking. Man, I read plagiarism. I'm like, what? Goodness, I just drew a sketch. How did I plagiarize something? You guys aren't talking about me. I'm real insecure, people. So if I if I see a word like play, plagiarism, I freak out. But yeah, so like uh, you guys are saying that there was some there's some controversy over Alfonso Dunn. And Jake Parker, one accusing the other of, of um, plagiarism. Yeah, which is sad. You know, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't know that was going on. Uh, I think I, I caught a glimpse of that somewhere. But I don't look into stuff like that. You know, I don't read into all that and buy into all that stuff. You know, they're both great artists. I love uh, what they both do on YouTube. And uh, I've seen their work elsewhere, but mainly YouTube. But yeah, I don't... You know, pl plagiarism is a, a sticky one because it's so... We're all, you know, grabbing from life and from different people that we admire. It's kind of part of your growth as an artist. I don't know the details of that. I'm not going to speculate. All I'm saying is that, yeah, really, I don't, I don't buy into a whole lot of that. Like, unless it's very distinctly evident, like verbatim, like, you know, you know that is that. You know, you could lay a vellum over top and see that somebody kind of traced the idea. It, it's got to be pretty... Um, visibly noticeable for me to to you know even consider that but i don't i don't like looking into all that negativity like it's just like that's why i try to avoid the news like there's just too much yeah too much negativity all right so i got like i don't know what i did here but i got like some really defined abs but i wanted to show you the anatomy and they kind of dip down to a little bit of a point here so I'm, and, and abs are actually pretty asymmetrical so you'll see in art, we tend to draw them pretty symmetrical, but that's one of the areas of the body you can actually get away with some asymmetry. Um, they're almost never symmetrical, it seems like, when I'm studying uh, you know, from life and stuff like that. I don't tend to see them being very symmetrical. But again, 
That's one of the things we do. And then also, you really want to focus on the tilt. So if I was to draw a line through here, you really want to tilt these areas of the body. So especially the, I feel like the glute needs to come out more, but especially the, um, the orientation from the hips to the uh, upper torso. So if we were to get up into here and have the rib cage a little more visible somewhere in here, you really want that distinction and that tilt. And it's not as simple as just a tilt from one way to the other. There's more than that. But that's one of those rhythms you have to look for, the way that we distribute our weight and we push off. Um, our body zigzags back and forth a lot, like all through the body. That's how we distribute our weight. So you have to look for those areas. And generally, if you do that, your, your characters won't look too overly stiff and upright. But all right, there's our weird little sketch. Is there any more that I should need to cover on here, or are you guys good? Quick sketch of the torso. Okay, so the torso, obviously we gotta pick a pose. Let's just do something relatively side view. So I did that one video where I talk about the bean shape. I really recommend watch, you know, you're watching that if you uh, wanna get better at the torso. I'll draw the openings for the arms. V for the collarbone, W there for the rib cage, the uh, pelvic, pelvis, but pelvic cradle, girdle, I don't know what I'm trying to say there, um, but something like this for the pelvic, this is something I picked up from Jim Lee's uh, video where he called it floating underwear, and I really think, even if you're into, you know, more like a uh, you know, want to be a figure drawing artist, I think it's still such a super important thing to find these simplified shapes that you can draw and, and practice maneuvering them all around the canvas. Because what happens is you, you get really confident at drawing these from your, your imagination. You see, I just put that down with no reference, and I'm not saying it's some great thing, but I didn't have to try really hard because I've practiced it enough where I can, you know, get this on the page. Now, you know, there's other things that need to be corrected. Proportions are probably off. It's not, uh, you know, I do things like check it from a distance. You know, upper body could be a little bit lower or smaller to the lower body. Obviously, with digital, it's pretty easy to fix that. Maybe it's got a little too much tilt. And then also, you can obviously get in here and uh, twist it a lot more as well. You know, so you really want to play around with that. So you want to think about this, you know, the ability to twist and contort um, through the midsection is super important. But that's where that bean shape really helps. And again, I would say reference uh, Jim Lee's video, especially if you're trying to do comic art, because he explains it in a way that's obviously just fantastic for comic artists. Um, oh, so you want to see the torso. So I'm going to make a female torso and then... Um, here I'll just you know throw in some ovals and then kind of blend those into the torso. You know, always look for the bony landmarks. So you got the jugular fossa right there, that little dip in between the clavicles. Bring an arm back this way. And I really think it's good to attach the arms last, arms and legs. I mean, really want to get that midsection going first and then um, then attach the uh, arms and legs. I find it to be a lot better. Even the head, I, I've been putting the head on later, which sounds <laughs> creepy, but it's, uh, it's just easier for me to, you know, to get all this working in the midsection, which I find to be the more difficult thing to lay out. Um... Where if I put arms and legs on too soon, it's like I start to compromise the, uh, the look of the body or I miss something. So, yeah, just try it out. I mean, obviously, we all have different ways to, you know, you might be better at drawing the arms in sooner. You just have to try it out. 
So again, navel in the midsection, and then you know, we can bring the arms out, try to throw the lines for more of a sense of fluidity. Bring the arm out towards us a little bit. And we can start pushing all this back and you know pick and choose what lines we really want to see but that's that's kind of how I would get that into place so then I tend to think about this area just being a bit of a mannequin and then now I need to refine it a bit more. Hands, I usually have to draw these a couple times. Always seem to make the pointer finger too big. I don't know what the deal is with that. This is kind of one of the things I do. And this is always a tricky area. So like right here, as far as the torso goes, I always have a, a tough time gauging how wide I really need this area where the lat would be from this angle, I guess, or the rib cage. So it's good to like get the rib cage drawn in maybe even again. And really there's this, if you're going for a more realistic depiction, the, the rib cage kind of bends back. It's hard to draw from this angle, but it, it's not smooth like I tend to draw it. For comics, I draw it a lot more smooth, but just keep in mind that I know it's not really smooth like that. It actually comes down and out like this from a straight view, more like this. So, but I need to bring that in, then maybe this line here. I guess this leg would need to be more straight down. It almost looks like she's falling over. Oh, get that curve right there. <laughs> Mermaid Man. He was talking about SpongeBob. All right, let me read through these real quick. Okay, I think you guys are just talking back and forth. If I miss something, make sure to comment again and uh, you know, kind of remind me because I'm I'm looking up at the screen once in a while as I'm drawing here. right there it's too stiff looking Well, there you go. There's a quick one. I mean, it's not, oh, you have a big belly button. Um, you know, it's, it's not perfect. And then you use like a little triangle here to find the placement of the nipples and so on and so forth. And then you just keep refining it. But that's my process for how I would draw a torso.
Okay, back to back to Modoc here. Unless you guys want to see some of the background on the Spider-Man piece, whatever you guys want. Oh, you were asking me to draw Mermaid Man. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. That's hilarious, but I'm not doing it. My son would be pretty happy. He loves, he's in, he's in the SpongeBob phase right now, big time. It's pretty funny. And I'm digging it. Even though, I don't know, man. They say some pretty crazy stuff at times. He's seven, so I'm like, I don't know if I should be letting let my son watch this. But, it's funny. It's just, uh... I gotta remember that, you know, even the comics that we watched, or not comics, sorry, cartoons we watched back in the day, they all do that. They all throw in those hidden little messages for uh, the adults, I guess, to, you know, to get while they're watching it with the kids. But, yeah, some of them, it's like, I don't know, they took that a little too far, but it's funny stuff, though. Yeah, so I think on this character, I need to pull some reference, to it, but it, I think he doesn't need muscles, right? He's sitting in this chair. It'd be kind of silly. I make these mistakes quite often where it's like, I don't really think through it enough. And so I'm trying to be more aware of that. Like, no, you got to think about, you know, what this character's like. You know, he's all robot parts, not muscles, right? I don't know. How do you guys feel about that? Do you, do you think it's cool to put muscles on everything even though it doesn't make sense? I mean, it's comics. I mean, there's definitely a lot of that going on, right? Am I crazy here? Muscles, no muscles. What do you guys think? I'm leaning towards no muscles and just more of the robotic suit design. <laughs> muscles. No muscles. All right, one on one. Now I'm stuck again. It has to fit the character. We're all crazy. I know we are, aren't we? That's why we're sitting here drawing comics, because we're just nuts. We've all lost our minds years ago. In the famous words of Jack Nicholson, I was sane once. It was the worst five minutes of my life. Love that guy. I think he's done acting though, right? I haven't seen him in nothing in a while. It's the last movie I saw Jack Nicholson in. It was probably uh, Departed, right? No, I'm sorry, LaMonkey. I'm not drawing Mermaid Man. I Maybe another time. I don't even know that I could draw Mermaid Man. And plus, I, want, I really want to work on this piece. So sorry. Uh, I'm using a Wacom synth. Cintiq. Oh, stop with the crying faces. Come on. Suck it up, Buttercup. You're better than that. <laughs> it's like, all right, no worries. Thank you. Because you were starting to make me feel guilty. I got enough guilt in my life. All right, so I think I'm going to go with just this kind of rounded this here and there and then some techie lines I got the ones going across like uh, you would do on Colossus and then I'll probably shade the front of the knee I think like I did the other one um, yeah I don't know and then some chromey kind of shading like this
something like that. Check it from a distance. Yeah, I think that looks more appropriate for the this weird looking dude. Yeah, so another thing I want to do, or I will be doing very soon here, is um, I'm going to be streaming with uh, StreamYard, and I'm going to invite uh, a few of you on. See, I have to figure out the format for this, okay? So what I'm going to do is invite a few of you on. Oh, by the way, I'm copying this layer, and I'm going to blue line it so I can ink it again. That's what I've been doing lately. Um, you know, like uh, StreamYard supports six people at a time, but I'd like to keep it three, four, whatever. Um, what I want to do is bring you guys on and look at some of your art and then work with you on it. I, or I might just have five people, four or five people come on and then each person will sit down for, you know, 20, 30 minutes and then move on to the next one. I think that would be a lot more interesting, hopefully for everybody to see. And then also a lot more personable for you guys that, that are really supporting the channel. Um, so we need to figure out how to get everybody on, I got to get you guys on a list, you know, so I need you guys to like kind of submit maybe through my website or something. Um, if you go, let's just do that. So if you're interested in this concept, go to my website, which is rampstudios.com. Snoop around for a while. So it helps my Google analytics rate ranking rankings, please, please. And then, uh, you know, send me a, um, an email through that that uh, message form that my uh, messaging God, I can't talk today forgive me um, my uh, message box my email form and uh, let me know that you're interested in, in setting this up and so what I'll do is I'll pick like I said four or five people we'll do this like in a, a week or two and well you know that way you're on the channel you get to show your work but we also get to work through your work a little bit and talk about you know how to improve it you know aspects that you might have questions with them more one-on-one -on -one. because it's it's cool to do it like this I like doing this but it's hard to I want to just sit here and draw but then I want to look up and read the comments I don't want to miss anybody's comments I guess I need a moderator or something but it's just harder so um, but at least there you know when we jump on a stream like that I can really answer back in a, in a more respectful way like okay so what are you really dealing with and we can delve into that a little bit um, so it, sh it should be good for everybody so that's what we're going to do so again remember just go to my website shoot me an email through my uh, rampstudiocomics.com website and then I will uh, I'll, I'll put everybody on a list and I'll select a few and then we'll do that and then maybe if it goes well in a few weeks we'll do it again and select a few more So I got to think of ways to freshen up the channel anyways. I can't just keep doing the same videos. So we're going to we're going to stagnate, you know. The channel isn't going to keep growing and people will be like, "Ah, guy just keeps doing the same old thing over and over. Same characters, same videos." You guys get bored, right? Everybody gets bored. I did give him a calf muscle, but I guess that's okay, right? Yeah, thanks to the core. That's really nice of you to say. Spawn's one of my favorites, too. Always will be. And I absolutely love drawing that character. In fact, I just drew another one of Spawn, and I didn't even share it because I, I didn't finish it. Um, but I keep looking at it, and I'm like, I, I need to finish that piece, or I need to just share it <laughs> I'm finished because... But I, I just did a couple, you know? It's like I draw Spawn quite a bit. Um, absolutely love that character. I really like drawing the characters that I don't have to do in such a clean, concise manner. 
I noticed that about my own art style that I gravitate towards those characters because they're easier for me. Like it's easier for me to draw Venom or uh, like this guy, the the grimacing face. You know that was easier for me. And the hair looks horrible. I got to fix that. But the grimacing face was easier for me, and it's fun to do. And then like these chromy little effects. I don't know. It's like I got a certain series of things that I like to draw that I feel like I can draw better. Uh, and Spawn is one of those ones where you can really let loose on the character as well. Or I don't know, maybe it's more than that. Maybe it's the connection from the story and what I remember, the nostalgia of it from when I you know, first started reading those comics. Those first 20 were like just, I don't know, to me they were always going to go down in history as being the best comics I've ever you know, that greatest feeling of imagination and excitement of reading those comics. Uh, what are you drawing on? I think I already mentioned, but it's a Wacom Cintiq, and I'm using Clip Studio Paint. Yeah, thanks, Robert Cameron. Appreciate that as well. Okay, so... Yeah, what's nice about doing it this way too, if you like just draw in part of it and then ink over that part, you can blue line it, you can drop back the opacity, you can kind of finalize one part of the art and be done with it. I really like that aspect of it because I do bounce around a lot. So there's there's that point where if I can just say, okay, enough's enough, I'm going to clean up this area. Cutting the artwork and then blue lining it and then inking that area gives me that sense of completion and then I can move on to the next part and the next part, keep doing that. So yeah, I, I find that to be pretty helpful. Because if not, I'll just sit here and keep dinking with it for days. Yeah, so... Another thing I want to let you guys know is I'm I'm back, I think I've already mentioned it, but I'll say it again. I'm back to uh, doing some 3D. And so I always, I go in these these bouts where I want to start sculpting and ZBrush again. So I just did a sculpt of a Hulk head, posted that on my DeviantArt. And, but I've been messing around with Blender and I'm kind of hooked. Like I, as soon as I get done here, I'm going to do a couple hours studying uh, with Blender. And the reason is I, I did a lot of 3D back in the day with a software called Lightwave, which isn't as popular these days, but it was uh, back in the day. And uh, I, I just love designing in 3D. And there's aspects of it I feel like it helps me with my art anyways. I've mentioned that plenty of times. And it's um, something I just like to do. It, uh, I don't know. It excites me, I guess. But... Um, but Blender is totally free, so I'm going to probably be doing some videos because you guys can work along. Uh, that's, that's what's so amazing about it. Like, it's a super powerful 3D program that you don't have to pay for, which is just totally blows my mind because I came up when I was trying to get my hands on things like 3D Max and Lightwave, and they're all thousands and thousands of dollars. They even bought a copy of Lightwave, and then they go on, they go out of business. I'm like, oh, that's lovely. So glad I bought a copy of that, but um, but it's fine. I mean, I I did I made a lot of money doing lightwave stuff over the years uh, in my younger days. So I shouldn't say a lot of money, but it helped make me a living. So I don't mind giving some of it back and buying it. It's just it's just unfortunate that they went out of business. Really, it was a really great program, which I think everything's still functional, but there just won't be any updates or something like that. But Blender is amazingly powerful. Like, I've been designing just some basic stuff in there, and it's, oh, it's nuts. It's nuts how powerful that is and completely free. It just, again, blows my mind. So people, oh, people have no excuse to not be doing, like, amazing things with art and design. And there's so many um, opportunities afforded to us. Yeah. Just super cool. Oh, 
Oh, cool. The core is saying you made your icon, uh, your logo with Blender. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's super cool, man. I'm I'm really excited to uh, to be working in that program. Oh, got to do the little techie lines. What am I doing? Now, just so you know, too, another cool feature right here is this curve. I usually don't use it for something like this, but I'll show you. You go from point to point and then pull. So it's like you click, click, or no, sorry. It used to be like that. I'm pretty sure. You just click, hold, go to here, let go, and then pull your curve. And it's still off, which is weird because why is that off? Let me increase the size. And then I think it increases, yeah, it increases the size as you increase your brush, brush size. So bracket up and down keys. So your bracket keys will go, uh, we'll scale it up and down. Try to pull it way over here. Yeah, I don't like the way it's pulling that curve. That is not the way it used to be. Hmm. Not cool. Yeah, this, to me, this should pull a nice even curve not not one that's tighter in the middle if not you would almost have to go like this and like this which is counterproductive hmm that is not the way it used to be maybe a bezier no which you can go back and edit these points but still that's all right, I'm just going to draw it in. I'm going to have to go back and revisit that tool because that is not the way it worked before. You could also drop in a layer here. But, uh, oh, I did drop in a layer. What am I saying? Okay, in the knee area, let's see. I don't know where I want to put that. Yeah, I guess one more right before the knee. Like that. Okay, let me go back with the erase. Or actually, no, I'm on another layer, so I'm going to go back with white. And then what I'll do is just grab the top. Bottoms on white there. I'll grab the top edges of this, like this. Kind of brings out that little bit of a chromey kind of effect. Okay, now the other one. Okay, proportions are off, so I want to fix that. Yeah, thanks, Crazy Popcorn. Uh, I use the bl the blue line below to like so when I'm drawing something I drop it back to blue line so I'll show you real quick here so if I draw this out and so now I want to try to get a similar look to that other leg so I'm gonna get rid of the feeling of the anatomy but I got to widen out the leg a little more and it comes down bring it out here
I don't even know if I should be drawing ankles. Probably not. Because it's more of like a robot armor armor thing going on there. But whatever. Get the front plane change of the knee in there. Figure out the position of the knee. So I'm, I'm sketching this with ink. I've actually been doing that more where I don't even go to a uh, pencil brush as much. It's not a big deal. It's, it's all on whatever you feel comfortable with. It's all the same thing. But since it is digital, there's a lot of room for uh, editing. So it's you don't really have to draw it with a per se pencil brush. But again, if you feel more comfortable doing that, do that. Something like that. And then... Like this knee shape is a little bit off from the other one. This area right here I need to figure out. Like I almost want to put like these disc shapes right there. So I kind of try to figure out the, the volume of this area by putting in other shapes. And so I brought this line down like this, back up, circle here, oval, I guess. Like that, like that. Son of a foot. Okay, so something like this. And then what I'll do, you know, I keep refining it a bit. I try to get these shapes pretty close to what I want to see there. Oh, and he's got these, like, connection points. These openings for the leg. But then I'll, I'll cut this and drop it back. So let me get a little bit more reference going on here. Some of the reference for the rendering. Again, these big chromey kind of effects. These are great because they, they fill in a lot of area, make it look more solid. They're pretty easy to do. You just have to zigzag back and forth a bit. Kind of throw them around. And you can get super wild with these. Like there's styles where people just go crazy and they put all kinds of swirls and uh, spec um, little dabs of, you know, little stipple and all kinds of crazy stuff. You can really get pretty wild with any of this. Okay, some line weight. So I'll draw that in like that. And then I'll take that and just cut it. this command X command V on a Mac control on a PC uh, control C control V on a PC and then I'll take this and I'll click this which blue lines it now the only bad thing is I still got a little bit of sketch under there so I can go to the previous layer where is that so I actually got the blue above that's kind of weird um, go to the previous layer erase some of that back I don't need that now so it does get a little layer crazy but it's um I don't know, I find this to be a pretty helpful way to do it. I also want to check it from a distance, make sure. So I also want to fix it right now before I go to ink. It's not a big deal. I mean, you can fix it after you ink as well, but um, I think that's close enough. And then, yeah, I'm back on my ink lines. Uh, I can add another layer. You know what? Actually, what I'll do, I'll just put it with the other leg. Might as well. I'll even call this legs. No, no, no. Little legs. That's more appropriate. Okay. Is anybody even watching? Let me see here. Do the comments. When am I planning on streaming again? That's really the problem. I don't plan these. I just jump in when I have time. Uh, but like I mentioned, if, if people want to, you know, go on that next stream where we talk about your art um, and I help you review it, you know, Help with arts, kind of mentorship a little bit or whatever. That um, will probably be in a week or two. But I'll, I don't know. I'll probably I want need to get back on trying to stream once a week. It's just, yeah, it's just everything's crazy right now for me. Um, so I'll I'll try to do it once a week. But yeah, it's probably going to be closer to every other. Oh, Chris, uh, yeah, so where can I upload my demonstrations from your comic book course? Uh, where are you taking it, Chris? If you're taking it Udemy, uh, you, you upload it right there through Udemy. Where exactly are you taking it?
Yeah, and as far as uh, when he asked, do I plan on working for Marvel or DC? Yeah, yeah. If you if you know somebody, uh, can you can you get me in? I don't know. I don't know if that's in the cards. Hopefully one day, but it's it's tough to really say because those guys are super super talented and and all right, I don't want to say super talented, super skillful. I don't like throwing the word talent out a whole lot, but. It's, it's weird where the distinction lies, I guess, but they're really fast is what I'm getting at. And that's, maybe that's talent. I don't know. Maybe that's just developed skills that come across as insanely talented, but, uh, but they're super, super fast. And that's something I do struggle with. Like I'm not that fast. I'm, I mean, I guess it's all subjective. You know, maybe some of you are watching and go, wow, this looks fast to me. That's cool, and and hopefully that'll just keep improving, or will that will keep improving, because that's how it goes. You just keep doing something over and over again, and you figure out shortcuts, you figure out your groove, your you know what you're good at, what you're not, all this stuff, and you develop more on the things that you're not good at. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know, man. It's, I think to to do those comics, you got to be super fast. I almost feel like I would have to compromise the detail that I like to do. I know it sounds bad. You should never compromise your art, but um, but I could definitely do a lighter style, like a very, le you know, like a less rendered style. I could definitely do that for a completed title. I know I could do that per, per month is what I'm saying. Um, but this kind of rendering, I don't, I don't know. I have to get much faster. Thanks, Anthony Potato. I, me, me too. Me too. Darn speed. Oof. Yeah, I know it. Okay, how to draw comic style art from sketch rendering. Yeah, Chris, I didn't mean which course. I meant where are you taking it at? Are you, are you taking it through Udemy? Um, through my teachable school? Where are you at? That's what I meant as far as uploading your demonstration. You can even send it to my through my email at ramstudiocomics.com. You can attach some JPEGs to that. I really recommend people take advantage of that. I mean, but if you're already on one of those other sites, you can share it through there as well. Uh, no, I'm not working for Marvel, uh, Marlon. I appreciate the fact that you asked that though, that maybe you think I could. I, that's awesome. No, I don't work for Marvel. I wish. That would be the dream job, honestly. Um, I, I am a huge Marvel fan. Like, I, I... You know, I'm a DC fan as well, but... But if, you know... If I had to pick, if I could work on one title, it would definitely be Spider-Man. There's no doubt in my mind. That's always... That's That would be my bucket list goal right there. Yeah, so I'm I'm an indie creator. Um, I, you know, this is another thing is I have been struggling to get my my book two. I am almost done with book two of my character Blackstone. Okay, book one is available on Gumroad um, for digital download on my Gumroad or whatever, and book two has almost been done for quite some time, and I hit like a really bad mental block and, and how I wanted to see the story evolve and I stopped. I stagnated and just stopped and that's not cool. I don't recommend that to anybody. I'm not trying to recommend that but it does happen. It ha It's happened to me. And, uh, but I honestly think that part of what's going to help is what I'm doing right here where and I'm not saying the fan art because that's probably not helping. Like I need to pull back from the fan art but the fan art allows me to share stuff with with you guys that you understand that you know and understand as far as 
character types so you can gauge it much better and people that I you know I share the uh, stuff on social media and different things it allows them to say oh that person draws to this level they either like it or they don't if they know the characters it's more relatable uh, and it's so it's more marketable and it's it's easier to develop an audience things like that um, but it can be a double-edged sword and to not let that get in the way of me drawing my own book um, but the reason why I'm saying this is actually helping with that is I'm talking about the actual software so um, that's why I'm actually I've been thinking around in um, Clip Studio Paint again is because this is where my book is and and I, I feel like I got out of the way that I was drawing my comic and it was you know I was getting a bit confused with the process where Clip Studio is if I do it all right here I can just knock them out you know I but I kind of have to stay here because it has all the tools right here to do it so I'm gonna get back on my pages and be sharing more content on that extremely soon um, I just have to like you know commit and do it and um, get that next book out and roll right into book three you know and a big part of it and it's unfortunate but it's been like the whole money thing and it, it shouldn't be but this always ties into everything I make money off selling digital content brushes and courses online and so even though I feel like I should be able to stop and just draw my comic I'm kind of afraid that that's not really you know I'm, I'm not really set up to do that yet like I gotta keep pumping out content to keep making a living uh, and you know my book doesn't sell tremendously well I also haven't done Indiegogo people will immediately say I'll do an Indiegogo and you know it'll take off and and I, I hope it will but I'm not so confident that it will and that's you know sucks to say but it's the truth um, so yeah it's that but yes I do have my own character called Blackstone Eternal book one is done he was also published as a short story in the back of uh, Arrow and Assault which I did years ago and uh, book two is almost completed I just need to quit making excuses and get back on it so this has been a good talk and I'm glad you guys are listening as I complain about my problems yeah you know somebody just asked about do I like inking with the real G pen versus the other I honestly didn't know. All I could tell you is that once I updated uh, Clip Studio here, I feel like the brushes are smoother. I feel like it's it's running better. Um, so yeah, maybe that's part of the brush settings in this particular one. But I feel like overall it's just running better. I even noticed it on the app version on my iPad. So, and then consequently, or maybe not consequently, but alternatively, uh, I noticed it. Procreate once I updated it felt worse like I was just like man I, I gotta really quit here's the messed up thing is on desktops you can generally control when the updates occur on the iPad you really can't if, if you wait long enough like your iPad will even outdate I guess and I was never really fully aware of this I think this is totally messed up that it does occur this way but if uh, you know after so long your, your iPad will quit being uh, you won't be able to update the apps and, and it at all it become useless and not useless but it just won't you know be top of line anymore I think that's totally messed up like if the thing functions technically you shouldn't have to run updates and then and also get um, left behind uh, because of an older model totally not cool with that but it is what it is um, now the, now the drawback to that is maybe you don't ever update you know like I'm, I'm really kind of of two minds about that because I honestly feel like if it's not broke then don't fix it like but then you get left behind on the new tech and the new releases as well so you kind of have to be open to that a bit <laughs> do you have any advice on artists who want to begin streaming yeah, make sure you check your mic before you start streaming. I did that today. I'm really sorry, everybody. That was embarrassing. But uh, now you just got to go for it. Like, I I honestly, 
I mean, I'm not some good person to ask. I, I have a very small streaming setup here, and you know, it's not like I get tons of views or nothing like that. Uh, but but you know, I get some, which is great. Um, I, th I think you just do what you do, and you be uh, you be yourself. You know, you be yourself. <laughs> Try to be yourself and uh, be legit, um, but not too legit, because you might quit. You know, you got to be careful of that, obviously. Do you go to art school? It's always the same questions. Do you ever notice that? Um, yeah, I did go to art school. Mainly, I went to school, and instead of doing my work, I drew in my books. That's, that's how I always tell people I did go to art school because I never paid attention in class. Um, yeah, so... I didn't go to actual formal art school or anything like that. Um, I don't know that you need it. I mean, people, I'm not saying it's bad. If you got that opportunity, go for it. I mean, I definitely would have loved to go to a good art school. I would have loved to go to like, um, um, is it Kubert? Yeah, Joe Kubert School for uh, Comic Art, right? Something like that. Like, I would have loved to go to that school. I would still love to go to that school. I'd go there right now if I could. Um, but that being said, online courses are freaking amazing. I mean, I'm not just saying that because I make online courses. I'm actually serious. Like, I take them all the time. I, I spend an absorbent amount of time on YouTube taking in all the amazing videos that are there. I'm, a, I'm on Skillshare watching different classes all the time from amazing instructors. Like, I don't know that I... I mean... Nothing can replace going to school. I get that. Like the interaction, the social interaction, and the, the you know, the, the feeling of being in the presence of other amazing artists, you just can't beat it. That synergy is super, super important. But if you can't get that, then you might as well just absorb all these amazing courses and classes from super talented uh, individuals that have seen it all, done it all. I mean, it's super cool. Like... So I would just say go for that. But no, me personally, I have always been more of a self-taught individual. And, and by self-taught, I mean uh, a lot of books. Like I, I used to just camp out in uh, Barnes & Noble and read uh, all sorts of art books and 3D design books and you name it. I was, you know, I was just constantly in there um, absorbing, not absorbing, you know, processing <laughs> that information. Like, and now it's all just online and, and there's just tons of great content out there. So yeah, there's really no excuse not to be what you want to be um, as an artist, as a designer, whatever it is you're after. Yeah, so somebody just said it's about drive, it's about power. It is, it's all about drive. Self-drive and determination is super important and and I'm really fortunate because that's the one thing I've never really lacked in my life I've always been driven uh, it's probably my single best and worst <laughs> character trait I'm not saying it's all good it's there's there's aspects of it where it's not as good as it could be um, but yeah I'm, I'm super driven super motivated and uh, I'm thankful for that I'm not sure everybody in my life is always been thankful of that but it is what it is like I just I want to be good at this stuff I've always wanted to achieve um, you know and I've been a working professional since I was uh, 25 like I haven't worked for anybody else since I was 25 years old and I'm 46 so I've now worked uh, as an independent as a um, uh, freelancer or as a entrepreneur whatever you want to call it I've done that longer now than I ever worked for anybody by a lot so you know and I, and I never really fell on hard times I mean I'm not trying to brag but what I'm trying to tell people is hopefully motivate you and say you know it's it's so doable it's so e it's not easy I don't want to say it's easy it's not easy it's just very doable but you got to like just go for it and just do it and in the in the doing part, will will safeguard you from many of the. You know, like if I think people think that like, oh, I'm gonna do that, but then I'm gonna struggle and I'm gonna run out of work and and, and you do got to get your 
art to a certain level before you can take that jump. I guess I kind of feel that way. Like I think that's what college is for people. Like you know you you do that four year, six year program, whatever it takes you. You know four years we'll say, and it prepares you for the world and to sell your work and to get that job. And um, I just don't believe in the job part anymore. I, I mean I quit believing that years ago, um, but not everybody. You know some people want that that security and that four hundred one k and all that good stuff and. I totally get that, you know, health insurance, all that. It's it's really smart in a lot of situations, especially if you got a pack of kids. But you can still do it on your own, and I'm proof of that. And I, I would never do it any other way. Because all the information is right there in front of you. Everything you want to know and everything you ever want to achieve is right in front of you. You just got to grab it and and take control, you know, and just do it. Yeah, I mean, I've read books and and back to Barnes and Noble, right? So I was like, oh my god, this is like it's basically a glorified library. It's a library with a really good coffee shop, and so which I'm sure that's not the way it was supposed to be. I was supposed to be buying those books, but I bought some, and uh, so I'd sit there and read all that. I read through multiple books on 3D design, and then went and got a job doing 3D animation for local television commercials. Now I'm not saying it was some big deal because they were just little local TV spots. But that was all self-taught and just reading through those books, trying to absorb and, you know, uh, why do I keep saying absorb? Uh, gain the knowledge from it. And then I, I was able to do it. And I did it for a few years and even won some awards for the animations. Like they were, they were kind of cheesy, but they were fun. They were cool and they were good for the area. Uh, so that's probably why you know, I was able to get some awards from them. But still... It was all from just picking up the books and it wasn't from paying some school to teach me a set of skills and then going out and then having student loan debt and all that crazy stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, that's the part I can't, you know, wrap my head around. But, um, but yeah, so oh, that one leg is bigger. Why am I not? I suck at proportions. I got to adjust this leg. It's, it's bigger and it shouldn't be. So, you know, I'll be glad when they, they put that liquefy tool in here. Because liquefy, it's so easy. You just grab that area. And you got the warp. Let me see if I can warp it. I don't really. And here's where it messes you up, too. Because in some of these, you can group all this together. See how I made these little different layers? So now I'm going to backfire. I'll fix it later. But what you can do is you can group them and liquefy the group. Uh, I think that's how Procreate is. Super helpful. Um, but I don't think you can do it in here. And then Brett, what do you see on the passive income is what step you're at? Because you got to think about your later years. Yeah, yeah, and passive income is great. And I, now I don't think anything is truly passive, but what I do is I, I make these different assets, right? So I've got brushes, I've got courses, and those all continue to sell. They do require that I update them. I take care of people. People give me questions like this brush didn't work. How do I fix it? You know, so it's not entirely passive, but it does keep earning income without doing a whole lot more. Um, so that's important. And I, and I think a lot of artists don't take advantage of that as, as much as they could because, again, you're creating stuff. You, you have all sorts of... I'm trying to fix this here. This looks really bad. Uh, you have all sorts of stuff that you could be developing as an artist and then um, putting out there. So to me personally, I think there's, there's a lot of opportunity as a creative individual. Like, so for instance, uh, yesterday, right, I was, I was designing a um, side of a building uh, for th in 3D and really just to learn because I, I don't know Blender yet, but I'm, I'm studying it. And you guys will see, I'll, I'll be sharing stuff pretty soon. Uh, I'll catch on pretty quick because I've already learned 3D. Um, it's just kind of, you have to relearn a new interface and, and what, you know what's different what's been updated since I've been out of it for a while so there are things that I need to learn but anyways the, the knowledge is is uh, relatable but the thing is I was like trying to build this city and then part of me goes well couldn't I 
you know, I'm building some buildings, but I'll eventually try to do a city because that's just the way I, I'll try to design like a whole city in 3D. And uh, but then I looked and I thought, ah, you know, I could probably just download a sweet city from somewhere else, you know, or they have city generators, for instance, that are particle generators. And, you know, so you start looking at all this other stuff. I eventually landed on Google, uh, uh, Google Earth, and that, that's a really neat way to do it as well. Um, but the um, the thing is, is that the the downloads, even for like some really well done 3D um, buildings and with texture maps and all that good stuff, they were like 70 bucks a download. I didn't find one under 65, I think was the cheapest one I found. And it was good, but it wasn't great. It was just, but it was good. And if you had a need for it, it's amazing because you don't have to sit there and spend your time designing that. You can just download it and be a, about your merry day, your merry way. So there's so many opportunities for stuff like that. And then that now with what's going on, people can send that over to somewhere else. Somebody can print that on the other side of a globe with a 3D printer. I mean, it's, it's just super cool what's, what's out there in front of us. Um, just lots of opportunity. But me personally, I'll sit there and learn how to build each piece because it I'm interested in that kind of stuff. You know, it's, it's something that I like to do. And then I'll eventually share some content on here with you guys. And some of you will like it, maybe. Some of you won't. I don't know. It depends on how many people really want to learn 3D. Uh, thank you, Ketchup. Appreciate that. What 3D program do you use? Uh, so I'm talking about Blender. I've used Lightwave in the past. I also sculpt in ZBrush. So those are my go-to programs. Plus, I'm, I'm doing this too because I want to bring my son up into the world of 3D. He, he, you know, he may want to do it. He's already showing an interest. Um, you know, it's, and it's, I'm not going to push him. Like, if he wants it, he wants it. If he doesn't, it's totally up to him. But, uh, but I want to give him the opportunity to do that type of stuff. Um, because, you know, in the future, I mean, well, already now, it's like everything is 3D, right? It's like 3D... Uh, you know, 3D printing is huge, 3D animation, huge, games, all 3D, VR is getting, you know, slowly uh, better and better, um, more affordable for better technology, all that good stuff. So, you know, it's only a matter of time. It's like, it's everything, you know, and you're either going to be a programmer, which really is, is super important. Like, I'd, I'd love to, I wish I knew programming. I'd try to teach them that, but I don't know it. Uh, I, I would like to design an app at some point, but... I need to uh, need to start learning uh, programming for that app programming whatever, and um, but I can teach them 3D because I have some you know some foundational knowledge in that, and so I'm I'm pretty excited to see what he does with that, and hopefully he gravitates towards it. Hopefully he wants to do that. But if not, whatever you know, I'm gonna support him no matter what he wants to do. He's already a pretty good artist at seven years old, so. I should be doing this hair from back here because it's, it's got kind of this weird hairdo. It's kind of like a monster thing. Or no, lurch, not monster. From the monsters. Or wait, Lurch was from Adam's family, wasn't he? The monsters was the family and the dad was the Frankenstein looking dude. All right, so you're, uh, Captain Ripley says I'm in an art academy right now, learning ZBrush, and it is 
and in a wait and in a drawing intensive they're really strongly against anime and comic book <laughs> oh nice all about Loomis too they're strongly against it huh I think that's so silly. I get it. I mean, I get where, like, when they try to teach a certain thing, they want to teach fundamentals before stylization, um, which, you know, I guess, right? I mean, I think that's why they do that, but I don't know. Why would you be against comic art and anime? There's so much good information in there, and the people that do that are super polished and talented for the most part. Not always, but a lot of them are really, really good. I mean, like... Comic artists, a lot of them are masters of illustrating anatomy. And then some take it into a crazy direction, but it doesn't matter. It's it's still impressive stuff. I, I, I don't know. I don't like taking anything off the table. But I guess I could see where they might want to do that. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks Metal Arsonist. Um, start with C. Yeah, that's that's what I need to do, and I, I, I feel like I'm so late to the party, I mean, but I, I still want to do it, and it's, again, especially for my son, to get him ready for, um, I mean, programming is going to be super important for his generation, it's already been insanely important for previous generations, so, yeah, I definitely want to get him on that. Yeah, I think I think it's a lot easier to find a job as a as a 3D modeler. If you've got pretty strong uh, 3D skills, there's just a lot of opportunity for that right now. Like we've already mentioned, uh, gaming, like like um, you know, gaming, printing. There's so much 3D printing going on now. Um, conceptual designs, even like storyboards. I'm sure you could like pull off some storyboard work with that, but but even, uh, or maybe not the storyboards, but definitely the animatics or the actual animations after they go from the animatics. Um, uh, somebody I always mentioned on the channel here, Chris Scalf, he's on my featured channels list. Uh, we'll mess around and do different like ZBrush stuff or talk about 3D stuff. He does amazing. He's like recreating people. And not even recreating, some are recreations of actual people. Some are just made up people so what they're doing these days is they're getting hyper-realistic models made of of, uh, of people, of models. Um, so when I say models, I'm meaning it twice. 3D model, also a model, like, you know, modeling, right? Modeling gig or whatever. So, like, they're, they're using these models uh, to display products. And then, and you think it'd be so, like, like, why would you do that? Just use a real person. Well, there's, there's all sorts of liabilities with real people there's all sorts of like restrictions like you know you got to fly somebody out to a set you gotta you know set up all this um, you know, actors and, and, and lighting and set coordinators and all this crazy stuff to get these shots well they're they're now starting to just do that all with hyper realistic models and then they can buy that 3d model and they're done they own it they own rights to it uh, and it doesn't age you know, it's like it stays young. So, and it's really messed up in a lot of ways, like how it replaces people in a sense. But, uh, but there are certain aspects of it to where it's just beneficial and it's just the way of the future. It's just gonna, it's, it's already happening. They're already doing it. And, um, yeah, check out his work and you'll see what I'm talking about. Like he does, I think a lot of people visit the work and think, oh, well, that's just a, a model you copied or that's just a, a photo you altered. No, he built it. He's building these people from the floor up. Like every little nook and cranny, the face texture, the you see the work that goes into just uh, sculpting and rendering the eyeball. You know, you have to do these multiple lenses, and some are reversed, and for the reflection, it's kind of weird. But um, it's super cool to see what people can do with that. Um, and yeah, just tons and tons of opportunities. I mean, you can just sit around and model characters and do a, a sweet animation. You know, look at all the cool 3D animations. Like, it seems like every good um, animation these days, or cartoon slash movie, you know, 3D movie, it's all 3D now. It's not 
It's like they don't even do typical cell shading anymore, it seems like. Except for like the, the Batman, you know, Justice League type animations. Those are pretty cool. Those were all the old school drawn out, which is sweet. And I guess a lot of anime stuff, right? But, um, but yeah, 3D is just taking over a lot of that. Like all the Disney movies are all 3D. Man, this hair sucks. I don't like it. I know when somebody asked me earlier, like, how, how do you do hair? It's like, uh, no, let me, let me ask you, how do you do hair? Because I'm, I'm like struggling at the moment. Break it up a little more. I'll eventually figure it out. When in doubt, just keep drawing, right? Eventually figure something out. <laughs> oh, sorry, Lee Monkey. Sorry, you gotta go wash the dishes. <laughs> That's hilarious. See, my mom said I gotta go wash the dishes. Um, what are we at here? How long is this stream been going? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Glad you like the metal texture. That's fun to do. And I think what I'm going to do is in the background, I guess I could throw in a little bit of that because I, like, I like to take a break when I'm sh not feeling a certain part of it. Um, but for the background, I'm thinking I'm just going to draw in like lots of like little techie gadgetry. I don't know how I'm gonna design this yet, but I'm gonna, I usually just draw in like a lot of little shapes. It's not a whole lot in in mind. I guess I could lay in a perspective, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. And a bunch of little wires and things. And I think it'll look cool. I've seen it a couple where the wires kind of come down and connect to him as well. And then I was also thinking a bit of, um, oh, man, I keep hitting the white and it does not switch. That is driving me bonkers. Um, and a little bit of like smoke rolling off his forehead piece. Because I guess he shoots like beams, beams out of there. Is that too much? What do you guys think? Okay, you guys like the idea? Cool. All right. That's what I was hoping, but that's really what I do is I like sit in here and like scribble different shapes and I don't really have a whole lot in my brain when I'm doing this. Like I always feel awkward about this part because you know, if somebody was like, well, what are you thinking? What's what's your thought process? Uh, it's to zone out and just draw shapes. And then if the shapes don't look like anything, I can command Z my way out of it. I do it again. I guess there's some, I don't know. I feel like if I overthink it, like if I went in here very structured, you know, got some perspective in place, it helps in certain areas, but then it, it constricts my way of thinking in others. So wait, let me try it this way with a little bit of like it's like I feel like I'm I'm trying to draw like 
I don't know. It's too blocky, too... Yeah, I don't like that. Hold on. So I do this a few times, obviously. Um, and sometimes I gotta pull the character out of the way and just draw a background. Like, I almost feel like it'd be cooler to have these art shapes like this. And then draw off of those... And so he's almost like sitting in the middle of all that. Again, this is going to look really scratchy, but I'm just trying to work through the idea here. And I could still angle some of the screens the other way. Maybe darken this end down here. Or you know what, maybe I could even have more of the wires and bigger, um, I don't know, I almost feel like this needs to all get shaded in. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know about this part. Maybe like some. Oh, you know what? We could try one of these. Uh, these kind of things. We do like the. Yeah, I don't know if I'll keep that part, but just kind of testing out some ideas here. And again, I'd probably blue line it. Push it back a little bit. It just gives me some food for thought. And then I'm thinking like the very back, back here. Oh, another layer. The very back, I'd probably just crosshatch this or something because I need some solid shapes to kind of push him out a little bit more I think so maybe something like that Let's work on the little chariot thing a little more. Actually, I gotta get his arm fixed too. Let's do that. Trying to figure out where I'm going to put more little techie details.
this is the part that cracks me up too. I mean, this whole character design cracks me up. But like uh, the fact that he's he's like this futuristic computer, or is he futuristic? Oh, anyways, he's this high tech computer brain box guy, but he still has a joystick. <laughs> that's super funny. Like that's what shows you the character was designed a long time ago, and some of that's just stuck because, I mean. We almost we're almost past the need for joysticks. And I, I give it another ten years, and kids are gonna be like, "Really, you had to play your video games with joysticks? That seems like so much work." Now we just plug it into our brains. Uh, hopefully not that, but there's gonna be something going on. Some retina tracking. Something. Ooh, that is a bad hand. Time to flip. This guy just looks like he's super happy, doesn't he? Oh, thanks, Anthony. Very nice of you to do. Let's see what you're saying here. Hey, I've been following you since 8th grade, and now I'm 19. Oh, that's cool. Thanks so much. And a sophomore in college. That's awesome. Congrats. Time does fly, you're right. I'm working on sample pages and wondering if maybe you could look at them when I'm done. Yeah, of course. So send those over to uh, go through my website, ramstudiocomics.com, and attach some JPEGs. Try to keep them smaller JPEGs, but obviously big enough where I could see them, and attach those um, through the, uh, the email form. And I'd be happy to look at those and see what I can do to offer some uh, critique or insight for you. Yeah, that's, that's awesome, man. So thanks so much for that. Uh, that kind message and, and for uh, uh, appreciate the the donation there or tip I don't know what you call it. is that a tip but thank you yeah so uh, Kira I am still working on Blackstone in fact that's one of the reasons why I'm back into Clip Studio Paint is because my my Blackstone comic is in this software. Uh, I, I've done panels in Procreate, but it's it's much faster for me to just do the whole book in this software. So this is part of me getting back to getting comfortable drawing this again. But as I mentioned earlier in the, the stream a couple times now, is that uh, since I updated the software, I noticed it's actually running better as well. So it's the uh, brushes seem to be functioning better and um, but yeah so it's it's pretty cool like um, but yeah I'm getting back on the the Blackstone comic it should already been book two should already been done and out and um, yeah thanks for inquiring about that See the fingers, I think, would be over here more. And we'd see the inside of the hand on this side. So, just drawing this really bad hand right now. <laughs> I do this from time to time. It's like, oh, I'll figure out these shapes any day now. A little, little panel down here for a couple. Couple buttons. Oh, why are hands so hard to draw? that background at? 
There it is. Turn that back a little more. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. I'm getting a little quiet here, people. Yeah, hands are pain. I'm trying to simplify it. So that's why I usually do this thing where I, I try to figure out the direction of a finger and then build off of it and then keep the curve alignment in mind and then try not to line them up see that it looks funny right now because they're too lined up and the uh, this would be the back of the knuckles so this wouldn't connect right there so just little things like that but it usually starts off pretty wonky but then I can usually figure it out I just have to keep moving the shapes around tend to find if I think of things like that, like if I think of it like, hey, these are just shapes and you know, if you could just move the shapes around and attach them with different rendering techniques, it seems to like um, make it easier for my brain to process. Like I just need to quit thinking about it. Like it's this big complex illustration that, like I need, I need to quit thinking that I need to see every shape and line in my mind perfectly or I can't draw it. That's not really the way it is. You can design a character um, and, and when you design something you generally don't see it in your mind or maybe you see it in your mind. I don't. I see aspects of it. I get faint glimpses, glimpses of it in my mind and then I have to use my ability to design it, to develop it. Uh, that's that's typically how I get through these pieces. I don't 
I wish I could see it perfectly in my imagination. And I feel like I could do that better when I was younger. Like, a, but it's not like it was some clear picture. I just felt like I could see things a little bit better back then. But now I, I lean more on my ability to develop it through techniques. But I think that's really what you have to do anyways. I don't know though, I get these pretty uh, pretty distinct periods where I can't. I feel like I can't draw as well. But I, I think that typically is just frustration and then you have to alleviate the frustration, de-stress, come back to it, and generally it's, you know, it's all better. Like you just have to chill. All right, so what else? Let me save this because I haven't saved in a bit. And let me sip my coffee. You guys got any questions? Yeah, so this is the background work, and I look how much I'm I'm drawing the background. And I'm covering it up with the characters. <laughs> Not lovely, but um, I've actually drawn this background multiple times. But I, so far, I like this particular building right here. Oh, man, that is getting annoying. I keep thinking I'm on black. I like this building right there. I don't really like much else in this scene. I feel like this building is too close. But I, I had this idea in mind that Doc got. Well, it's from the movie, right? The, the first movie but um when he's like climbing up the building and he like throws aunt may or something like uh but but i have to i have to position these buildings where it seems feasible that the tentacles would reach over and be able to connect so so yeah it's like i really should have thought that through a bit better in the sketch but dealing with it now but i figured i would show you that just so that you could see like you know, that's how I work through it. And then these were some little practice um, examples I did. So obviously this has nothing to do with the scene as far as the type of um, type of uh, drawing style or, you know, the type of architecture. But what I think is important to do is grab these perspective grids and just play around with some shapes. It's really kind of fun. Like I actually had a lot of fun doing those ones that I just showed you. Like you can practice little bezels. And I'll say, okay, if I bezeled that and I brought this piece up, how would it look? Would this come over at an angle? And then if this came out and then I added another piece that was slightly bigger, bezeled it again. Or wait, am I saying the wrong word again? It's bevel, not bezel, right? I don't know. You know what I mean, hopefully. And you just kind of keep playing around with this effect. And see how you can just create depth like that? It's, it's actually a lot of fun. And then you get into it and say, okay, well, I want this to appear bigger. Like this could be the leg to a, a lamp or a desk or whatever, I don't know. But if you want it to appear bigger, then generally, the way you do that is just detail it. So the size relationship usually conveys better if you start adding in some other, you know, smaller little designs or whatever. So it automatically starts looking a little fancier, you know, just by adding a little bit more trim. 
And then the other way is lots of little imperfections. You know, that's always fun to do, like put little cracks and imperfections in it. But anyways, this this process of, of creating these shapes is really a great way to get warmed up for buildings. I, I felt like I was struggling until I took the time to, to draw some of these. And then all of a sudden the background started coming out better. So just another little tip there for if you, if you feel yourself like, oh, I can't draw backgrounds today or I can't, whatever it is. Uh, just do some little warm-ups and, and, and do them freehand. Like, I think that it's better to just sit here and it could be, you could try some door patterns. You could try just, you know, if this was a walkway, you know, how would it, how would the recess be? And then how would you frame it off? You know, pro try different frame designs. Uh, and, and, oh, and back to that, I don't, you know, how it depends on how many of you here, were here when I said this earlier, if, if any. Um... Google, uh, um, not Google Maps, Google Earth. Amazing, amazing. I mean, so super uh, inspiring to sit there and be able to like zoom into different parts of the world and look at their architecture and just take from that. You know, take some different designs and say, okay, um, like for instance, I can see myself, I feel myself doing it here where I'm drawing this very basic version of trim. And so my imagination isn't where it needs to be or my memory of some kind of trim isn't isn't that great. And then all of a sudden you'll look at things from architecture and go, wow, they put like these little sculpture corner pieces in there that do this, do that, whatever, and they add so much detail and information to it. And you kind of need to stop what you're doing and look for stuff like that so that you can quit drawing the same basic boring rectangles, which is what I find myself doing. Uh, so I need to again stop what I'm doing and then go find some uh, neat architecture to study and then do this same little example but with some of that and uh, and play and then you start to realize oh the doors are trimmed out with this wrought iron steel or whatever and that, that's what makes them look more interesting and then there's you know they're segmented up and they each segment has trim to it or whatever and you know, I'm just kind of spitballing here but man I just I think it's a, a fun little exercise to do or maybe these are beveled And I think what's neat too about not worrying about these being clean and perfect is that you, you do so much more. It's just like figure drawing when you do your gesture drawing. You're not trying to draw a bunch of perfect bodies. You're throwing in a bunch of loose gestural bodies. So do the same thing even with architecture. And uh, yeah, you, you'll, be, you'll be amazed at how much it jogs your, you know, your imagination, your creativity. The perspective grid really helps with that because if I was just drawing on a blank white canvas, I'm not saying I couldn't do this, but it would be more skewed. Even though, again, I'm not being so critical at this point. Like, skewing it is perfectly fine. Um, like, I almost picture this being like side lights, but then, um, you know, maybe I'm doing things too rectangular and I need to say, okay, what if these, these uh, side lights were oval? And they had little cuts in them. I don't know. Let's try something else, or maybe something altogether different, like these kind of designs. Yeah, I just drew a basketball court. <laughs> that wasn't intentional. Okay. Anyways, just a little tip there for. Kind of jog in the imagination. Back to crazy face. Uh, let's see here.
Yeah, so Georgia, um, I get what you're saying. Like the perspective grids do seem overwhelming. So what, I, what I've been doing is just forcing myself to draw through them, even like with an ink pen. So I even printed some out on paper, grabbed an ink pen, and just started drawing over top. And it's like anything else that feel, there's a lot of resistance at first, you know, you feel that initial resistance and then you push through it and then you find a little bit of a flow. But uh, I, I feel like the best way to do that is to force yourself to draw over it with more immediate lines and then things start to click and you can always go back and then, you know, draw through them, um, you know, with your favorite pencil sets or whatever, uh, and then try to be more deliberate with your designs but um or start you know getting into your design process a bit more but i actually like just um jumping in with ink and, and drawing those different again studies though like if i'm looking at uh like yesterday i was pulling up uh churches in in um spain and it, it was so cool like google google earth is such a neat thing um I found myself like after after a while I was on the beaches of Cancun. Like I think I'll take a break and go chill on the beach for a minute. But uh, it's super cool. We just have these kind of resources right in front of us, and we can pull all this data, all this information, and, and reference it so quickly. It's just stunning. It just blows my mind. Uh, thanks very much, Anthony. I appreciate the uh, the tip there. Very nice of you. Um. Would you do some more videos on laying out panels for a page? Uh, maybe a course or storytelling? Love your courses. Thanks, Anthony. Um, yes, definitely. In fact, I again, back to what I was saying here about Clip Studio, um, this will be what I do most of it in. In fact, I'll, I'll, it won't be subject to just a software. Uh, I'll probably do a bit of traditional, a bit of digital, how I'd like to draw sometimes on paper, then ink digitally. Color is almost always digital. Uh, is always digital, uh, but I, I am going to be doing that. I want to get that next book of Blackstone out, and I feel like it'll be a great opportunity to share more of the layout process, the uh, the storytelling like you're asking for, so I will definitely be doing that, and, and very soon. So I've already started planning and staging some things out, um, so it all starts, like anything else with my process, it all starts with thumbnail sketching, and uh, lots of loose gestural sketches, a lot, you know, lots of brainstorming on on um, the back uh, the backs of napkins and stuff. You know, like not not going for perfect sketches, just lots of ideas. And um, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll be, make sure to make some uh, content that delves into that for you. So I appreciate that. Appreciate the uh, request. Yeah, and a video I've been wanting to do for quite some time. I've had I've had this video idea for ever, and I just need to sit down and do it. And I'm not I'm not sure if it's been done. I'm sure it has been done, but I'm gonna do one on my channel regardless because I don't I don't really contain myself in a box by saying I can only do stuff that no one else has done. I don't think that's fair. Like my audience is my audience, and, and you know, good content is good content, and, and even the content if it's been done the same way. Like I caught a lot of negative flack for one of my best videos, or I should say my best performing video, and uh, it's the Andrew Loomis method. And people, you know, I can't tell you how many times I get comments, people, well, it's just the Andrew Loomis method. Like I ripped it off or something. And it's like, yeah, but it's a good method. And and I think I said it in there, but if I forgot to, I definitely wrote it in the uh, the description. And it's not like I said, hey, check out this thing I invented. Uh, I just share any information that's good information. So if it's if it's a good idea, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it. So the idea I'm talking about that I'm gonna be making a video on, and again, I didn't make this, and obviously I'm gonna credit the artist. The artist is Wally Woods. So it's I believe it's 22 panels that work by Wally Woods. Uh, let me Google it real quick, make sure I'm saying that right. And it's it's great stuff. You can look it up right now. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and make a video where I actually illustrate those 22 panels because it's such great uh, fundamental or foundational information uh, you know 
it's it's time tested. Wally Woods is amazing, and let's see, I think it's 22 panels that work by Wally Woods. Yeah, it is, and and it's good to like you know Google that, go look at that, and and check it out because um, it's really simplistic, but it, it totally works. It's like when to use a silhouette, when to pull the camera back and do a downward shot of people standing on a blank white space. And, and all these shots are really great. And it's those types of tips that you gotta learn. Like another thing that he said, and I've mentioned this on the channel plenty of times, is when in doubt, black it out. And I constantly think of that. Like when I'm sitting here looking at this, I'm like, okay, if the composition's boring or I don't understand what to put back here, you know, black it out. Like maybe a nice solid shape will fix this. And um, so I'm constantly thinking of that little rhyme that he that he made. Uh, you know, it, it's just good stuff. So, and again, that's what I share on the channel. Like if it's something that I think is valuable information, I'm gonna share it and I'm gonna hopefully credit everybody properly. Uh, but it's not like I'm inventing the stuff. I'm not inventing the knowledge and I'm just showing you from my own perspective how I implement things, stuff like that, but that's it. Can I clean up here? I think I'm gonna clean up the arms now. Actually, you know what? Let me finish the hand right here. Yeah, so I do offer mentorships. Um, I haven't really put it out there a whole lot. I've mentioned it a couple times. So this is a response to a question from Georgia. Um, so it's just something where you'd have to contact me through my website. We'd set up a time. I, I am actually meeting with a student, I think it's tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow because they won the, uh, the contest we did. And uh, so I'll be doing that, you know, a couple hours of mentorship with, uh, with that person. And so yeah, I am doing it. I just, uh, I don't promote it a whole lot right now because I don't know how much of it I'm gonna be able to fit into my schedule. You know, I do a lot of like answering back students from the different uh, courses and then uh, also creating YouTube videos, trying to make time for these live streams, stuff like that. So I'm a pretty busy, busy dude. But, um, but yeah, I'd like to do more of it. So just, uh, like I said, if you got, got an interest in that, contact me through my website and I can let, uh, let you know more about that. I appreciate you asking. Well, let me read this. Take into account focal distances. Yeah, so this is Clip Studio Pro, um, yeah, the EX version. Oh, see, it says it right up top there. But um, yeah, really enjoy the software. Like, they, they did a great job. And I am not paid to say that. I'm not affiliated with Clip Studio, nothing like that. Uh, as you know on the channel, I oftentimes brag up Procreate. And again, not affiliated or paid to say that either. Uh, I just, it's just generally how I feel about them. Like, I, I really like the uh, the programs. Oh man, I got my shadows going cuckoo here. You know what? You know what? You might see a little bit of shadow there, but actually the shadows need to be on this side of the finger. Whoops. Another drawback to zooming in, like I just did here. And then I somehow added a layer. What did I do there? That's weird. Okay, I somehow jumped right off the layer I was on. Yeah, great software, except it 
<laughs> somehow jumps from layer to layer. No, that was me, not the software. I'm not blaming Clip Studio. It's my fault. So anyways, I got the shadow on the wrong side here. Because I only have about six brain cells and I'm multitasking right now. So they're all like, which way do we go? What do you want us to do now, Rob? Focus. Okay, something like that. Anyways, I'll fix that as I ink it. And then even his hands, I think I'm drawing knuckles, but really I need to draw like these little, this mechanical looking glove kind of thing would make more sense than knuckles. So let's say like a, maybe a rectangular shape back here. No. Rectangles are boring. Let's go for something like this. And maybe another line here. Some lines here. Is that too much? The thumb's too far over. And then let's shade the fingers down. Helps show that plane change. And it's easy. Bada boom, bada bing. Yeah, something's bugging me about it, but I'm just going to ink it because sometimes it will fix itself through the process. Like they say, trust the process, right? Whoa. I think that's what that's referring to when they say trust the process. Just got to like work through it and kind of find your way. I'm going to put this by the little legs because he has little arms. Yeah, so Sheldon, uh, which one's better, Clip, Clip Studio or Procreate for making comics? You know, I, I hate to say this, but I'm, I'm going to say it. And I'm speaking honestly here. Clip Studio. Like, I, I love Procreate. You guys know that. I'm constantly putting content on here for Procreate. I love Procreate. And some of my best art, I think, has come out of Procreate. Uh, there's a, a real sense of control with the Apple Pencil and the iPad Pro and the fact that I can maneuver and sit on a couch and watch a movie with the family and still draw. It's fantastic. Um, but the... Um, the drawback is that it doesn't have all the tools that I like to use for creating comics. Where Clip Studio has all of them and then some. Uh, Clip Studio is, is what I did my first uh, comic in, Blackstone, and almost done with the second, as I've mentioned multiple times. Um, it's got all the layers you can you'll ever need. It's got all the perspective tools you can. You can put multiple perspective tools in each area of the work. So, for instance, this is probably the biggest drawback for me for um, for uh, Procreate is that if I'm working with perspective, uh, as I often do, if I want to adjust the perspective um, or I want to add something that's on a different perspective within the scene, even different vanishing points, like turning a building, like for instance, if I go back to, the, uh, not that, this one, not this, but the uh, original scene. Let me show you what I mean here. Uh, that's just the scribbles. Where's the other one? Well, I'll just show you off this. So this is another version of this background that I'm working on. Okay, I've worked on, I've done this like background two, three times now. Anyways, um, but the thing is, is that basically... Um, Basically, if I wanted to turn one of these buildings, which is important, so if you have this scene where you're looking off in the distance, 
uh, or even back here if if I want this to look more realistic if I keep adding buildings like this it's it's going to flatten it out it's going to make it look a little too boring when all I have to do to make it look a little more interesting is kind of tilt a building like this right well now that's on a different it's not in a different perspective it's a, it's on different vanishing points which is totally feasible that's how things work again if you re, if you reference uh, Google Maps I'm sorry Google Earth and zoom into some cities especially older cities you're gonna see that buildings tit, tilt and twist they're, they're not twist but they angle differently from orientation from one to the other they all converge at the same horizon line but you have to have the ability to use multiple uh, perspectives so with this software you can easily do that you can add multiple uh, perspective grids as layers and put them wherever you want in your groups in your your uh, layers hierarchy so that's super important not to mention the X version you can compile an entire book in one unified document and you can add all your word balloons uh, and you've got 3d models I mean so the list goes on and on to why this is superior as far as all that goes um, yeah it, it just is I mean as far as making a full book and doing a comic and I'm not saying you can't do it with Procreate you can and you can definitely use them together which I highly recommend um, but the uh, as far as if you were to say you know which one's better for that specific task it'd be this one yeah so Anthony um, the email that I'm saying is you go to my website here let me let me give you the website it's ramstudiocomics.com and there's a contact form that you can attach your your artwork to yeah so just go to ramstudioscomics.com I didn't give they didn't give it as a link did it anyways just go there and then use the contact form attach your artwork and send it over it'll come right to my email box and then I can respond back to you and we can uh, we can check that out I feel like that shoulder looks weird yeah it does doesn't it it's like it's too high up so let me take this command shift T I believe yep just kind of drop that down a little more Hey, what's up, Aaron? Good to have you. Oh, thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. And then what's uh, what is what's the one saying? Um, Gabe saying waiting on Hollywood to make a live action Modoc movie with Patton Oswalt. Oh, that's cold, man. That's that's not even cool. You know you love Patton Oswalt. He's he's a great guy. Unless you're being entirely serious, because I, I wouldn't put it past. Hollywood I thought they were gonna use this character as um, um, a villain in the new the new lineup but they're not are they what what yeah you know what I got a lot of you guys on here that know your stuff right what is the new villain that they're setting up for with all these movies I, I can't seem to, to, to see it like am I missing something here what villain is it is it gonna be Kang the Conqueror like a version of Kang yeah, I'm such a horrible fan I don't really know anything and what's going on but I'm excited to see all the movies and I've been trying to keep up but 
I don't I don't really get what villain they're gonna go to and it's kind of bothering me too because um, I don't think they're, they're not off to a good start like the movies are actually they're good there's been some good ones I really liked um, oh goodness I liked it so much I can't think of the name um, is it Shang Chi Shang Shang Chi right Anyways, that was that was really good. Shang Chi, Shang Chi, but that was that was a great movie. It was fun. It was uh, beautiful to look at. Like it was just a, just a great flick. Um, but yeah, I'm not I'm not quite getting where they're taking it. But the other ones flat out. I'm not even interested in seeing. Like, was Eternals any good? It looked. I'm telling you right now. I didn't. I didn't even go to check it out because Eternals looked. Um, looks really weak, in my opinion. Yeah, Kang is confirmed for Ant Man and the Wasp. Okay, which I know that's going to be good. They they've done a great job with the Ant Man series. Um, yeah, so I'm wondering if that's the character they're setting up for this. I just feel like it's going to be really tough to beat the whole Thanos and Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, it's I don't I don't see that happen. I hate to say it, but I see them kind of failing on this this next attempt. Not overall, like just somewhat. You know, like it's not just not going to be as epic. I just have a hard time thinking they could even come close to what they were able to do with the first. You know set of movies and the, and the way they finished it it was just fantastic but we'll see I am hoping I'm actually hoping DC does a little bit better they which it seems like they are it seems like they're starting to reverse a little bit like DC is gonna start catching up and Marvel's gonna start struggling because they came out um, you know with all their heavy hitters and they, they've kind of we're kind of struggling to find that next lineup or something. Okay, so Jaman says uh, Eternals was a good watch, but it has no right being two hours forty minutes. Yeah, it's like they're all going for that three hour stretch of you know time span now. Well, I'm glad you liked it. It seemed like most of the people that I saw talking about it, uh, read talking about it, reviews and that just just were downing it like saying it was just not worth not worth watching so I was kind of worried so I'm glad at least you're saying it's good okay now I made a, a little mistake here it's not a big deal digitally um, it's not a big deal anyways but I usually don't put those lines in first and the reason being is I, I find myself stopping like kind of stuttering uh, when I come up to them so what I like to do here if I make the mistake of doing that actually might as well finish putting the other lines in since I already did it is uh, I'll do this first something like that and then I'll just put a layer over top and then draw through it because I can just go back and erase them anyways. So I find that to be a better way to go about it. So I feel like this effect right here, you really don't want to stop. You want to flow through it. Even if you're doing this traditionally, you can always come back with white out. So it's better that you kind of throw your lines, flow through it, get that feeling of... Uh, that waviness that you want to see in kind of a chromey like effect. Yeah, what's bugging me too is why don't they do a Hulk? Hurry up and do a Hulk movie with uh, Ruffalo, like a standalone Hulk movie with him. I think that's such a waste. 
You know, it's like they struggled with Hulk movies and finding the right, you know, delivery with those characters and the, the, the 3D. They nailed it for all the, um, you know, Avengers stuff. And you got Ruffalo, you know, which is still could still pull it off. They need to hurry up and do more with them. I just think that would that's a wasted opportunity. I mean, I was glad it, they, you know, put Hulk in, um, in Thor uh, Ragnarok, which was great. But, um, yeah, I think they should hurry up and do a standalone movie with him. Oh, Hulk is getting a movie now? And there's a She-Hulk show? Where did I miss that entirely? Seriously? Oh, man. I gotta Google some stuff. Time for me to Google. I'm gonna go Googling. Folks, I gotta jump out of here. I just got a message that I have to attend to. Um, plus we're at two hours and where is it? Two and a half hours, which is officially my longest stream, I think. But um, I'm gonna be bringing more of these real soon. Um, tell you what, before we bring it to a final here, if you guys, if you, <laughs> I can't talk today, man. This sucks. If you guys got any questions. Uh, let me know and then also if you uh got any requests for future content now is the time let me know and then i'm going to be getting that uh, i'm going to check my email so if you guys send me any uh requests for being on the stream where i have a couple people on the show i don't know if that sounds weird call it the show and uh i'll kind of review your work and try to offer some insight just be some mentorship on the channel here so Another way to say thanks for everything that you do, and I think it'll be good for the channel and good for you guys, so it's a win-win. Um, yeah, any final questions? Oh, She-Hulk comes out on Disney Plus sometime next year. Okay, gotcha. I thought it was already out. I'm like, man, how am I missing this stuff? Yeah, Aaron, I totally get you on that. I just thought they did a real good job with the the comedic side of things. I, you know, I love how in some of the Marvel movies they do really well with a mix of comedy and seriousness and drama and all that. It's, I think that's where, for me, that's where a lot of the DC films fail. You know, they stay too serious for too long and it just, it doesn't, uh, their sense of comedy and camaraderie doesn't come through or something. I don't know. Yeah, so I appreciate that. So the comments you guys are giving me, all good content. Thank you. I will do more on page layout stuff uh, very soon. Like that's, I'm going to put that on my front burner of what I need to do. Uh, probably be doing a Skillshare class as well on that and you know course content all that good stuff but I'll I'll be releasing videos on YouTube here and uh, breaking down some different scenes and talking about that um, so yeah please be on the lookout for that yeah and if you guys want to see the finished uh, piece here I'll be done with this today or tomorrow or something like that and then I'll have it on my DVNR my Instagram Make sure to check out the links and, and uh, you know follow me on there if you don't mind. And uh, yeah, so I really appreciate everybody tuning in and watching. I'll be bringing you more of these on the way very soon. 
And as always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now. Oh, one last thing, because I'm reading these comments that are still coming in. Sorry. Uh, so <laughs> send me whatever you think would be best for what you need help with. So when you're saying, if you, if you have a panel you're struggling with and you want some clarification on, that's what you send me. And then, you know, if I can get you on the stream, that's what we'll talk about. So um, it's not so much like just showing off your work. It's not a portfolio review so much as uh, some one-on-one -on -one kind of guidance. Well, it'll be a couple of us, but it'll be... So, you know, like a classroom setting of like, hey, I'm working on this and what do you think? What could be better? Uh, or you could tell me, well, I'm struggling with this and I need some clarity on this particular area of my work. It's a lot easier when I can see it and there's that real time back and forth of like, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. This is how I'd fix it. Um, so yeah, that that's essentially what the, uh, the uh, idea is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks very much, everybody, for watching. Talk to you soon. And uh, yeah, bye for now.